Oh my goodness, cats and kittens, I'm here. I had a minor catastrophe where the cord of the headset was just tied in a knot. <laughs> oh, we're good. Oh, good evening. Excuse me, I hope that your week has been going well. I'm just gonna do a tweet about being live if I can operate. at all. There we go. Sorted. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> Taken care of. Last week, I think it was last week, when I just, oh, I felt so unwell. For once, I'm not exhausted. I slept a full night last night, so hopefully we can play a decent amount of Mushroom Musume. I've been thinking about this game for weeks, however long it's been since we last played it. Want to unlock all those mushrooms. Oh, I guess last week might have been the Observation Duty knockoff test stream. If you were here, let me know in chat if the stream looked smooth last week to you. I don't remember if anybody said anything. Let's see, Hades, Donk, and Drapsnat, nice to see you as always. It's been four minutes. Well, I guess only two since I started speaking, but uh, we'll give it another minute and then we're going to get everything rocking and rolling. I'm just so prepared. Alright. Check on y'all in chat. Everything looks fine. Let's do a magical little over to here. Also, feel free to let me know in chat if you can see my captions. Because I cannot tell if they're working. They certainly don't show up when I watch the streams back. Um, so I don't know if they're showing when we're live. So let me know. Alright. What the heck are we doing? We okay, we're Bissan. We're a common pumpkin chanterelle. We have great appeal. Naturally charming and people seem to love us. And we're a witchling. We're touched by magic in some significant way. We have pretty balanced stats on this run through. What else do we have? We've got some cards. We are a young adult. We're sort of reputable. We have a Fae business card. Right, because we have to remember, we have to teach every single one how to read. Or else they're not going to be able to get the Fae business card event all the way through. And then for family, we have the rapport with the witch and the recluse. We don't have any magic, but we apparently have the ability to get five different kinds of magic. And we're just a witchling right now. Okay. Uh, we just got the Fae business card. Roger that. Alright, we're caught up. We know what the heck we're doing. Alyssa, thanks for joining us. Uh, let's move on forward. All right, a chilling breeze greets you one morning, heralding the approach of winter. The end of the year approaches and you find yourself considering your aspirations. Okay, maybe we're gonna go to college. We can't read though. Uh, you want to accomplish something significant, you decide. 
something you'll remember. Take on a dangerous quest. Attend a charming event at the gala. Pursue a great aspiration. That's directly what it's telling us. Decide not to pursue anything. So we're definitely going to pursue something. Take on a dangerous quest. Attending a charming event. I feel like this is an obvious choice to just pick pursue a great aspiration. Because that's what she said she wants to do. Um, yeah, let's just go for it. It's kind of vague, but there's something that you wanted to accomplish, actually. You need some great achievement to end the year on a high point. Take the Tooth Syndicate up on their offer. Okay, that's our only choice. Well, I, we're going to find out. I feel like this is a bad idea because they were like, the queen of them likes eating our teeth. Okay, here we go. Remembering the business card invitation. This is the first playthrough where we've done anything with this business card. Remembering the business card invitation you received by your magical intruder, you decide to humor them. Plus, who knows what they have to offer. It's at least worth investigating. Plus, plus, the boss sounded a bit interested in what you have to offer. Yeah, that's what I'm saying, though. You're going to be, like, kept as a tooth farm for this fairy queen. I think this is going to end badly. You decide you'll go when the time is right. After all, the last tooth you used only has just barely grown back. Has only just barely grown back. So we're going to wait. But we're going to do it. There are many things about this world that surprise you at every turn. Bizarre happenstances that aren't to be believed. Today you encounter another one of these surprises. Snow. Something that's always confused you was the distinction between magic and what the humans call science, and snow was one of those confusing gray areas for you. Thankfully, you are too busy enjoying the snow to care. <laughs> when you had first noticed its start, you ran to the edge of the forest as quickly as you could. You love the woods, but trees have a pesky habit of blocking the snow. And as the trees begin to thin, you can make out others that have had the same idea as you. Humans of all ages are running and playing about. As you walk around the edge of the village, you see a variety of ways that humans react to the snow. Some are taking the snow off the ground and pressing it in their hands, only to throw it at each other. Others are rolling the snow across the ground, creating spheres in a variety of sizes. You are shocked to see them stack, then decorate these orb monoliths to resemble little snow humans. Finally, some did not seem so satisfied by the snow. Some were stuck with shovels, trying to clear snow from the pathways around their shops and homes. <coughs> After getting an overview of what the others were doing, you decide that you want to participate in the activity known as snow as well. Create a stunning snow mushroom. Join in on the snow-based combat. Help the villagers shovel snow. Well... Um, I feel like making the snow mushroom might be fun. I feel like the playing snowballs, everybody might get freaked out maybe. And then helping them shovel the snow, we're s known as sort of reputable um, to the town. So I wonder if doing more shit for them is gonna... Um, make them like us more? What do y'all think? Let me get a little feedback here. I kind of want to make a snow mushroom. But that's like doing something by yourself. I guess we could play with the people. If we're thinking about reputation, we could get a reputation as being really good at snowballs yeah let's get known as being really good at snowballs oh gosh we got a dice roll that's a fail hmm, weapons made of ice that sounds simple you're sure you can win on this slippery battlefield okay so we failed and we think that snowballs are weapons made of ice that's not great. Hopefully we do not injure anyone with
with an ice-based weapon. You hurriedly start pressing snow in your hands, creating a small stack of ammo as you consider your strategy. The earliest indication that something is wrong is your first strike turning to powder in your hands. Somehow, you must not have pressed it well enough. As you frantically try to make more compact balls, you feel a sudden impact on your back, followed by dampness. The others have zero patience for you as you work. They simply pelt you mercilessly. <laughs> you, in a futile effort, try to throw one more snowball. It stays solid, but simply makes pitiful contact with the ground. It is with deep regret that you retreat, running back home in shame. Well, maybe our dampness will go up. While taking a stroll down the center of town, you catch the eye of a curious group of children. Hello? Okay. One of them lifts a finger to point at you and shouts, Look, a big mushy! That's pretty rude by all means. What do you want to do about this? Ignore the children and keep walking. Offer the kids some homemade dried mushroom treats. Uh, I don't remember what that is. Your body is made of useful resources. On use, it gives you... A little snack. Okay. No, we're not going to feed the children parts of our body. Point and shout at them. Go over and see if they would like to play. Do we want to yell at them? Or do we want to play with them? What do you think? I want to yell at them. I feel like we choose to be nice pretty often. But we're getting a reputable reputation. We need to keep... Um... Okay, that was a pass. Since you aren't that busy and you wish to learn more about human children anyways, you turn to face the group and ask if you can play with them. The kids let you join in, and you learn several new exciting games. Things like Tag, Hide and Seek, and a particularly fascinating one named Stick Throw. A nearby parent approaches you, thanking you for keeping the children occupied while they shop. You head home a bit later, after saying bye to your new little friends. So does that change our reputation? That's what I want, is to know... Still just sorta of reputable. I've been a good person. Oh! We just had to wait for it to change. Been a consistently been a good person. Excellent. As you go to the local bakery, you feel a set of eyes staring at you. You turn your neck and barely catch a glance at the man following you. He's wearing a beret and a chef's apron and making you feel uneasy. Tell the man off. You're not for eating. Run back home and do not lead him to your house. Yell at him. Oh, thank goodness that was a pass. You angrily turn on your heel and yell at him. I am a person, you know. You can see him visibly pale. Our robustness, I think, is what went up. Taking a handkerchief out of his pocket and wiping the sweat from his brow as he chokes out an apology. You wake in the middling hours of a mild winter morning. It is snowing on the screen. The solace of solitude is disrupted only by latent birdsong carrying on the gentle wind. But try as you might, you are unable to shake the memory of the elusive tooth fairy and her goons. It's time. You've kept the business card handed to you that night beside your bed. Grabbing it, you look over it carefully. You look it over, there are words on the front and on the back. It has a crude picture of someone kicking multiple mushrooms arranged in a circle. Give us a ring, you recall the man, the main fairy saying, the man fairy, <laughs> the main fairy. Looks like, looking back at the artwork, you still feel like it's a hate crime, but regardless, as the gears in your mushy brain grind, you come to a realization, surely it can't be that on the nose. Walking outside, it doesn't take long before you set upon a small patch of mushrooms arranged in a circle. From what you've heard, these patches are quite popular among fey folk, and yeah, it's a fairy circle. Only, and, mm, uh, words, 
And while the card does show to commit heinous acts of what you could only assume to equate to property damage, and yet... Kick. Kick. Snip snap. Bippity bap. <laughs> Before you know it, the scent of cheap fragrance and cured meats envelops you. An angry voice calls out, Hey, what you's doing to my- Oh, it's you! Before you can even stammer at a greeting, a warm, soft, encompassing aura envelops and whisky envelops you and whisks you away. When your senses return to you, you find yourself in an ethereal place. It's less chaos incarnate and more abstracted normalcy as your brain tries to make heads or tails of the geometry. The various inconsistencies and nuanced architectural stylings prove a bit much for you, however, and your eyes end up focusing mostly overhead. Above you, the sky is luminous and beautiful, coruscant and intimidatingly mighty. Okay, mushy pants, the fairy leader from before says just beside you. Frankly, the little wise guy with a better reason to keep your eyes skywise than anything else. Alright, I sees ya. Fey place can be a bit sticky in the brain if you ain't got the casing for it. Let's get yous inside. Besides, the boss lady'd like to see ya. You let the fairy guide you by the hand. It seems that even the laws of gravity are mutable in this place. So yeah, as what we got here is a little slice of life we done cut out for ourselves. We calls it the cavity. <laughs> of course they call it the cavity. Adorable. It's our own little pocket in the Fey realm. You knows it's probably pretty lo Oh god, I keep forgetting it's this guy. It's our own little pocket in the Fey realm. You knows it's probably pretty lucky you done chose the right fairy circle. Pretty sure... Uh, what? Pretty sure a Fey Choe... Oh, okay. Pretty sure a fate away moved into the neighborhood lately, and those prudes ain't so amicable to folks as us. He pauses for a moment, realization watching over him like gravy on a steak sandwich. Really makes you wonder who the true syndicate is sometimes. He seems caught up in his own world, grumbling to himself as he guides you across the area. Grumble, grumble. Protection money's one thing, but those fees... And it's my, it's my grass anyway. I should get to choose its length. <laughs> Preach. Meanwhile, the property prices oig evolve. Suddenly, the muttering stop, and you can feel the tension in the fairy relax. Ah, where he is now. Come on and step inside. It's a lot prettier in here. You open your eyes, shocked to find yourself in a beautiful mansion. Oh my fucking god! Is this the same house? Like the stylings, take it from the architectural taste of an old friend and a boss. Bit ostentatious if you ask me, but who done love a good curve and staircase? Anyways, I got to go let the boss know you see ya. Feel free to peruse and sitch. The boss extends her hospitality. As the fairy leaves, you're left to your own devices. With some time to kill, you decide to look around the residence. I wonder if the rooms are in all the same spots. It's been almost half an hour, everybody drink water. Oh, delicious nectar of life. And a sip of coffee for me, also. delicious nectar also because I deserve it so when we originally explored this house when it was the witch's house in the woods the layout was that there was a library to the left the dining room to the right which you went through to get to the kitchen and the pantry and then there was the door behind the painting and then there was the upstairs that really only had one room I don't know how much of a time crunch we have in this one because we were moving around the house 
previously, every time we moved from a location, like from room to room, an hour went by. And then we only had until midnight. Explore the kitchen. Explore the library. Explore the back office. Explore the research office. Schmooze with the fairy at the front desk. I'd really like to go in order. I like the questionability of the research office, though. We seem uncertain about what lies in wait for us at the research office, so I'm picking that one. Walking down a hallway, you come across a room leading into what is known as the research department. You're not sure what use the Tooth Fairy and her cronies could have for researching, but it wouldn't hurt to check out. Inside, you see several diagrams lining the walls, and multiple fairies hunched over in research. Human research, by the looks of it. And not very good research, either. Help the fairies understand the human condition. Wax rhetoric on the weaknesses of human physiology. Lament on the darkest characteristics of humanity. I mean, I like to help. And also telling them that the humans are weak both physically and ethically just doesn't seem like a good thing to do. The Fae are fickle, and uh, I don't I don't know how much more into that I need to go. So, but they can be made to understand humanity in that like it could make them empathize with people. So maybe they won't kill and eat them. Seeing as you spent a good deal of time in their lands, it only seems fitting that you'd be an authority on them. You attempt to intervene in the research, putting forth your own purported knowledge of humans. You start to recall memories of interactions past. Ooh, that is a fail. But we've done so good! Okay. For some reason, it's all coming up blank. Oh, we can't remember anything. <laughs> I've been there. Bissan, been there. What, do you, what you do recall seems a bit warped and uncertain. Then again, humans are fairly warped and uncertain creatures. The researchers don't seem to pay you any mind, and you begin to feel like a fool. Embarrassed, you make your way back to the foyer. At least you don't stumble over your feet, just your words. Still waiting on the ferry, there's time left to explore. Um, so we've got the kitchen, library, back office, well, we should smooth the fairy at the front desk because it's good to have a friend in your back pocket. And also, secretaries, front desk workers, receptionists, people who answer phones, and people who do the day-to-day um, -day labor in large running organizations and households know shit. They know shit, and if you pay respect to them, they will help you out. So, not wanting to go too far, you decide to stop by the front desk. Which, as it turns out, doubles as the fairy resources desk. Okay, HR, we're gonna maybe get some dirt. It seems the sassy fairy in the wing-tipped glasses is in charge of settling any and all internal disputes. You can't help but notice the look of abject boredom on her expression. If there ever was someone to schmooze, it's the HR department. <laughs> compliment her attire. Don't be a kiss-ass. Begrudge the incompetent employees. Um, that guy could come back and hear you saying that, and also, those are her co-workers. Spread some juicy gossip, but we don't know anything. So we either have to be a kiss-ass, look down our nose, spread gossip. We're really robust and human. I don't know, y'all. What do you think? I'm kind of... I mean, we could assert dominance and insult her co-workers. Do you think she'd like that? <laughs> Yeah, 
Let's see if she um, gives us any dirt. Popping an elbow on the desk and leaning over, you, ch you cock a thumb and smile in unison. With ease, you let loose a wry joke about some of the less effective employees. Oh god, she's not gonna like it. I can already tell. I knew she wasn't gonna like this. Fuck. <clears throat> okay. The fairy looks up at you, peering over her glasses and... Shut up. She cracks a smile. Seems like whatever you said resonates with her. The two of you already share a mild camaraderie. Pleased with yourself, you return to the main part of the foyer. It seems like the boss might be taking her sweet time. Oh well, more for you to explore. Okay. Kitchen, library, back office. We don't have... We can go to the library. We're very, like, inquisitive. We can't read. We can't read, so going in the office... The office is probably where the boss is. The office and the, the library might not be very useful. And there's areas behind the kitchen if the layout is similar to the witch's house. Go to the kitchen. Meandering into the room off the side of the foyer, you come across a robust dining room. It's filled with a myriad of miniature seats placed before regal tables draped with ostentatious linen. Demure chandeliers glitter emerald foxfire through the room, radiating from curious fungi sprouting at the tips of the fixture's crystal bubeshes. The whimsy of the place is overshadowed only by its intimacy. Beyond that, however, you arrive in what looks to be the kitchens. A number of fairies stop their work upon your arrival, and you suspect you might not be welcome. That is, until a tall, lanky fairy with quite the hat gives you a smile and introduces themselves as the head chef. And you must be that fabulous magic mushy ma'am, what with the teeth, yes? Our madam boss has spoken quite so highly of you, yes indeed. Much flavor to your teeth, hmm? Quite the display of umami perfection. Can't help but find the chef's conviction a bit personal, though their intentions seem pure enough. You must help us, I insist, I insist. Such a different background, such culinary prowess waiting to be tapped, yes, yes. Please make for us. Well, not wanting to spurn the chef's hospitality, and also there's not much else to do, you attempt to take a crack at what the kitchens have to offer. Oh, we're gonna cook. I don't know if Bissan can cook, but if... I mean, I know some recipes. Use a tooth to make a fine fairy cuisine. This is something worth using that for. Make an attempt at fine cuisine. Make an attempt at dastardly cuisine. The spiral. No, that was it. Spiral for? I feel like there's like tokens. It'll automatically give us the. Oh, my yearly goal. I have a yearly goal. This spiral at the top, I feel like, means that we get a boost. Let me look at the stats. But they don't have the pictures on them. Oh, I don't remember which ones are which. What do I lose? Do I l is it robustness? Because that's pretty high. Let's just cook. We can do this. Prepare yourself mentally and your workplace physically. With all these tools at your disposal, you're sure to make something good. Minutes tick by, but you work with such ease that before long the meal is done. And jauntily does the head chef flutter by, eager to take a taste of what you've made. A spoon floats to their lips and for a moment the flavors stay in their mouth. A ten! 
Uh, it looks like a ten-sided die that would be a nat ten. With a hearty swallow, their wings flutter wildly, and a great smile appears across their face. This is quite fantastic. Absolutely fantas... Fantas... Mmm, fantastical. Fata... Oh, taste. Fantastical. Oh, sweet tastes and bastes. It seems what you've made has been satisfactory for the head chef, and by extension, the kitchen staff. As you make your way back to the foyer, you leave to the tune of accolades and the sound of your ego inflating. <laughs> a timid messenger lets you know that the boss will be just a little longer. Guess you can explore some more then. We can't read, but I want to go to the library, because I feel like the back office is where that lady is. Walking into the library beside the foyer, you are immediately overcome with the smell of old books. I is one of my favorite smells. There's even a magnificent mirror spanning the side wall, offering the illusion of a greater space. The room's quite nice, all things considered. Though glancing around, you can't help notice a mezzanine high above but doesn't lead anywhere. It is, by all means, inaccessible. Who would do that? Oh right, little tricksters with the power of flight. Of course. Remarkably, it's silent in the library, despite the odd fairy or two fluttering about. Looking to kill time, you decide to... Take a book from high above? That's a spell. Grab a book off the shelf. Gaze at your beauty within the mirror. Petition nearby Faye for help grabbing a book. I want to use a spell. It's our first spell. Utilizing a bit of the old handy razzle-dazzle, you float down a particular book from the mezzanine that catches your eye. Opening it, you realize that it's a book on human anatomy. It's incredibly detailed, though it looks like it's been unopened for some time. Noticing it, one of the fairies flutters by, a look of recognition blossoming on their face. Where'd you find this, they whispered. We all thought this had been lost for ages. You point to where you retrieved it from and offer a simple shrug. Ah, jeez, the boss gonna want to see this right quick. Thanks for the find and all. Quickly, the fairy was off, presumably to meet with the boss. Not sure of what else to do, you return to the foyer. That's all we can do? <sighs> but there's other stuff. Can't be much longer now. You can feel the excitement in the air. Palpable. Then again, that might just be fairy dust. Okay, I guess we're going in the back office. Walking into a room adjacent to the foyer, or this is where the hidden paint or the hidden room behind the painting was in the witch's house. Walking into a room adjacent to the foyer, you find yourself in what appears to be an altar. Which according to the fairies around, it may as well be, you're in the accounting department. Never has there been a more dreaded dive of grum and flippancy. One must be lawless. At least when dealing with such geeks. Check the back room stock. Cheer up the workers. I like that. Encourage the dreadful working conditions. This has like magical things on it. I want to know. They all seem a bit caught up in their own endeavors, transferring ones and zeros about. Nobody's able to break away from their workstations to go check, so you volunteer. I think that I double tapped and missed a line. Though you catch a few tidbits of conversation asking about stock in the back. Okay. You're met with a few quizzical expressions, but the majority seem relieved and point you in the proper direction. Fuck yes. Inside the storeroom, you realize there is a ton of inventory lining the walls. Luckily, it's all organized well enough that you're able to take a tally of each item by moving the boxes around. Lots of dental equipment and various liquids that seem to be used for teeth in some capacity. Nevertheless, you manage to take a full stock and return to the accounting department. The fairies are pleased with the numbers and thank you for your time. As you wait, the boss's head henchman comes down the stairs. All right, the boss is good to see us. Follow me. Turning around, the fairy travels back up the stairs with you not far behind. I feel like we're doing really well. We have done something nice for fairies in pretty much every room we've gone into. We've made friends with the front desk lady. We impressed the kitchen staff. We helped that fairy in the library because we found the book. And we did their inventory for 
the fairies that are in the back office. I think that we've done a decent amount of good deeds. Hopefully our reputation will go up. I'm taking some sips of my drinks. Mm. Okay. Hope I didn't keep you waiting too long. The boss is a pretty important lady. Oh, we're upstairs now. Real busy sometimes, but hey, you've got to have a look around, eh? Opening a door at the end of the hall, the fairy gestures. Right this way. Beyond, into a large bedroom, you spot her. The Tooth Fairy. And behind her sunken eyes, she sees you. And you feel fear. What? Every portion of her gargantuan body is a mass in teeth? And even as you enter, you witness the addition of another. They bring her the teeth and put them on her body? That is disgusting, my dudes. Shoved into her flesh, grafted onto her very being, from foot to head, she is comprised of thousands of teeth. You have made yourself known, she says, and you realize her maw is empty, devoid of her own teeth. Oh, maybe she's jealous. Your mushy teeth taste so good. They make my own teeth very happy. She licks her lips at the thought. Might I have another? Having found yourself in a position where it's probably best to comply, you break off another tooth and hand it over. And without missing a beat, the tooth fairy, giddy as can be, begins to grate it across her body. Ew! She eats across all the teeth jutting out from her skin if there is even skin underneath that porcelain shell. For a time there comes a light slurping noise. It seems the gratings are being sucked into any and all cavities on the fairy's body. Y'all, this is fucking disgusting. This is some of the most effective body horror I have ever encountered. Oh my god. This is a giant woman with no teeth in her mouth whose whole body is covered in other people's teeth and she eats by rubbing things on them I am I am I don't know I guess I'm upset <laughs> I guess I'm upset and impressed I'm very impressed Jesus. I create and destroy this world. Regress and Z ZVGN. I don't know how to say your name. Thanks for joining us. This is fucking disgusting. Um. <laughs> yes. This is exquisite. She doesn't have any teeth. Except for the ones all over her. Uh, the tooth fairy shudders. Regains her composure. <laughs> Such delectable morsels. Doing her voice is killing me. <laughs> Tell me, sweetheart, if you're if ever you're in need of some money, put a tooth under your pillow. For something like those, we will give you ample rewards. It's such a joy meeting you. Unfortunately, I am quite busy. Is she bi she can't do anything? The head henchman escorts you out of the room after the tooth fairy gives you a heartfelt goodbye. You want to make a comment about how you waited all that time for just a brief interaction, but you write it off as a loss. After dealing with this weird place, all you want is the safety and warmth of your bed. Yeah, I'm real grossed out now. <laughs> the mushroom needs to go take a shower. As you grow older, you look back over your life. Oh my gosh, is that it? You think back to the witch who created you and can't help but wonder if everything met her expectations. You wonder if you were the daughter your parent had hoped for. Ending after all this time. It's the same ending. <sighs> Alright, Bissan. Alright. We're gonna create the ultimate. We didn't make any spells. Right? Yeah, we didn't learn any spells. Minor illusionist. 
clairvoyance. Lesser elementalist. Minor necromancy. Minor spirit summoning. Okay, so we have some options. Damn. Okay. Let's keep going. Wait. Oh, uh, I bet I should have saved. Hang on. Can we get to redo that? That was so long. I didn't save through anything. Oh my god, okay. Well, all of the events are going to be different. I guess we're going to... I bet I can make it go mostly the same. Let's see. This is already different. <laughs> uh, we know the decisions to make in the house, so we can make that go fast. Damn, I can't believe I didn't. On one particularly desolate evening, you decide to take a walk around the outskirts of town. You find yourself overcome with an unaccountably easy, uneasy feeling as you pass by an abandoned neighborhood, dying amber light casting menacing shadows. As you enter a dilapidated gatehouse, protruding bits of ruin and decaying wood conspire in your periphery forming unnerving figures. Something skulks among them. Finally, you spot the thing. Your body tenses with alarm as you distinguish a smooth and gray-brown object in a half-formed approximation of a human shape. A statue of a woman, propelled by unknown means, shambles forward and locks its gaze on you. What? A set of glowing purple features overlays the stony mask of its face, hovering lines forming a mouth and eyes. You don't know why, but looking at the creature fills you with dismay and revulsion. Her glowing image of a mouth cycles through different shapes as an unpleasant whirring emanates from her head. She emits a strange, buzzing voice. Is this one a daughter of the witch? You nod stiffly, bewildered. I'm kind of glad I didn't save, because we keep getting different events. This one is a preferred subject. I will commence a necessary experiment to determine if this form is fit for consummation. Whoa. Okay. So, let's recap. You have identified who my parent is. And have decided that that means that you would like to experiment on me. To find out if we can have some sort of consummation. I don't know you. This thing means you great harm. You feel it at, to your core. I agree, Basan. Turn tail and run for the woods. Attack the creature. Tell her you are not a daughter of the witch. Subdue her with magic. Fuck. Mustering your magical energy, you buff at the stone woman with forceful winds, causing her to stumble as she approaches, but only barely. Damn it. Yes, this one will do nicely, she hums, approaching you with renewed and indomitable force. Your most concentrated efforts do little we're getting fucked because I didn't save. <laughs> Whatever, it's a new event we haven't seen before. Your most concentrated efforts do little to slow her as she approaches, grabbing your shoulder painfully and dragging you close to her. Here now, listen to this magic spell of my own. Her facial features glow with a sickening light as she brings them closer to your own. Her unnatural voice, quote, growing quieter. Then, in a trembling whisper, she tells you something. She says, Blanks. She blank you, allowing blank. Fall to your knees blank. In a drift blank. Black blank. Stops blank. Blank entirety. You awaken in the dead of night with little memory of the encounter. You do, however, bear a painful reminder. The creature has cursed you. Nearby town is having a big contest tomorrow. Where we've got an infestation? It says we're infested. We got bugs. We got 
cursed with bugs? Oh, those are the bugs. Edible mushrooms and food. Plentiful and well liked. Oh, I see the bugs and stuff were sort of reputable. We've cast one spell. Alright. Local cooks are all getting- okay, well, we cooked pretty well last time. The local cooks are all getting together to show off their best itches. It's open for anyone to compete or just watch. Including bits of yourself. Just go up and watch. We have to use part of ourselves. We've got two... What is that token for? Is that a spore? I think the spore is poison. I want to win. You throw together a nice mushroom incorporated dish, garnish it to make it look pretty, and head to the contest. The competition is tough, and each judge seems to have a different favorite already by the time they get to yours. Somehow, though, the pure flavor surpasses the experience technique of the other chefs, and you end up winning. Now we're well known. While wandering the woods near your home, you suddenly hear something rustling in the foliage ahead of you. Let's save fucking at all. Before you can react, a large boar bursts from the brush and locks eyes with you. You sense an intense flaming aura of determination emanate off this wild hog. I feel like pigs eat mushrooms. Preoccupy him with a sample, resort to magic, run for your life, it's just a pig, face it head on. You're sure you came prepared for this? There's another of those spirals. We're gonna cast a spell on this pig. Fuck! I should have used two coins. A grin curls across your face as you feel a swell of magic begin at your fingertips. Uh, I want to reload that roll. It'll be just that roll, won't it? Because it was right there. When I cast a spell, I will use two coins. Kill this pig! Thank you. You grin at the hog, repairing a small tempest at the tips of your fingers. With specific intent, a flick of your wrist hurls a gale at the swine, lifting it off its feet and hurling it through the air. After landing, the pig clamors to its feet, scurrying off in fear. That's what I fucking said. Saving because I shit. Because I cast a spell on that pig and it actually worked. Hell yes, I would like to save. What did I- what's the line that I miss? Uh, you wake in the middling hours of a mild winter morning. The solace of solitude is disrupted only by latent birdsong carrying on- Okay, it's time. Here we go. Let's get into... So we're gonna skip until we can make a decision. Alright. So. What do we do? we went to the research office maybe we'll roll better let's save now that we're here actually I'm saving so often now but I'm pissed off that I fucked myself over um I really want to try the human condition thing again let's re-roll it Come on. Damn! Alright, well, maybe we're not meant to talk to them about that. Okay, so we can tell them that humans are weak physically, which feels like we're 
setting humanity up for some kind of danger, or we can tell them that humans are weak ethically, where we convince them that humans, you know, deserve to be destroyed. Like, I feel like neither of these is good options. If they're studying the human condition, then the ethical thing is going to be closer to what they're interested in. But they seem uninterested in the human condition. So maybe they only care about the physiology. I guess let's try the physiology. You figure since you've been around the block enough to see humans at their best, worst, and weakest, that such information can be of use. Really, it's the weak part that should be focused on, especially for an operation such as this. But, aw, oh, son of a bitch. Okay, I'm kind of at a loss here. Do you want to know about people or not? I guess this is the only room we didn't get a good outcome in. Considering all the facets of humanity that you've come to grips with, you think emphasizing their worst qualities would be best. And boy are there a lot of them. You rant as it is readily apparent. Does not seem to grab much attention. Okay, they just don't care about us, man. While you were going for profound critique on the human condition, you just sort of sound petty. Plus, some of the points you're outlining sound like they're attempting to incite business practices that would lose the company money. And there's no greater shame than that. Rightfully displeased with yourself, you trudge back to the foyer. Okay. So, um... We made friends with the lady at the desk by talking about the employees, but it was a roll, so she might not like it now. She didn't like it this time. Ugh, I'm disappointed. The first run was so good. I will. Oh my god, all my rolls are bad. They were. I'm so irritated. I did good rolls. Let's just make the decisions that we made the first time. Okay, good. We don't remember. We go back to the foyer. We... Can I save? Ugh. I should have saved during that conversation. Uh, you can't stop me from saving. Okay. Because we're going to talk to this goddamn lady. She liked when we said something, some shit about her co-workers the first time. Excellent. Save again. Where do we go next? We go to the library and we float that fucking book down. Save again. We're not taking any chances. Okay. Take a book from above. Alright. Got that. Go to the kitchen. This one is another roll. Come on. Excellent. Okay. We did that. Back office. And we're gonna do their back room stock. Oh, I forgot this was also a roll. Shit. Ooh. 
Ooh, I need to save once I get here because that made me redo the roll and I could have fucked that up. All right. Come on. That counts. Save again. Oh, we gotta go through the disgusting conversation. Okay, we're fully in the final room. Skip through. All right. We got to be reputable. I use magic more times because I attacked that pig, but I didn't get any of those things. All right, and then we hit that. And then I should be able to go in here, go in my almanac. Until we get a new color. Alrighty. Let's make a new mushroom daughter. This is a new line, I think. No, it's the substrate. Okay. Quiet graveyard. Which is own front yard. Barren spot of forest. Long sit since struck by some invisible ailment. I could try and cultivate a necromancer. Oh my gosh. Okay, the walk to the gravesite was quiet. When the recluse arrived, they looked down at the grave of their mother. Perhaps this child wouldn't be related by blood, but she could be related by dirt, if nothing else. Arriving back at their meeting place, the recluse was excited to share their selection with the witch. So that's what you picked, eh? Very well, it shall do. Feeling the need to scrub their skin, the recluse retired to their hut to cleanse themselves. Alright. What is the next? Okay... Completed your first task admirably. Two more and I can finally give you what you want. There have been some activities I've been meaning to get to. Okay. Restock. Test. Make her a meal. Let's do some work for her. Real work. As the recluse began to take stock of the witch's belongings, they simply grew more and more astonished at the sort of items she kept in her possession. They dutifully gathered all manner of doll's eye, newt's tail, and even the hair from their own body. Hopefully that last thing wouldn't cause too much trouble in the future, knowing the way that witches are. Arriving back to their meeting point, the recluse was excited to report their progress to the witch. Ah, very good. How kind of you. Okay. What is it? Welcome back, Recluse. Are you prepared? Today is your big day, is it not? The last task is an easy one, or at least I believe so. Bring me something colorful. Something bright. Okay. Field of flowers, a stony river. Let's do the river again. We are, we've already gotten turquoise, so let's get a different color than that. Though underwater wasn't the first place most people thought of for color, the recluse understood there were many shades that people failed to consider. 
They arrived at a nearby river, glancing into the glassy water to spy a variety of sh small shining stones. Marble. Bloody. Slate. Obsidian. Brimstone. The bloody stone. It was small. Oh, everything's red now. Is it? It was small, but the recluse grabbed a peculiar stone with sharp, calcified edges and the appearance of blood in its pockets. Intrigued, they brought it back to the witch, who, after inspecting it, looked disgusted and insisted the recluse wash their hands. As they did so, the witch continued to shout, Something about kidneys? But the recluse didn't really catch what she said. Ew! Okay. Yeah. Pay me now with wealth. Pay me now with life. Sometimes soon in larger quantities. Much later in the way I choose. I always pick that because I want to know what she's going to ask for someday. The recluse told the witch they couldn't pay her. Not anytime soon. That is fine. Of course, I will collect payment eventually. All right. What is her name? Our new daughter's name. <sighs> it's an ab. Whoa. Okay. Offer a coin. I see. Can I get the? It skipped a lot. I don't need it to be auto skip. All right. Okay. We we skipped the tutorial. A small fairy clad in blood. Offer a coin. Um, we're not gonna eat or sell the fairy. Um, I'd rather do the fairy garden then give them a coin because we can buy more food without delay you quickly gather your supplies greenery some common foods hell throw in a drop of blood they love that sort of thing after consulting some books to ensure that it's an appropriate space you lure the fairy in with treats though they seem unsure at first the fairy eventually accepts your offer of a home though your daughter is not yet old enough to appreciate this pet you're sure she will in time the decision being made life continued um just says blood mushroom excellent environment my affection is only three potted and deaded very familiar okay a flock of hungry birds have been harassing both your crops and your daughter let's save because we have a whole new mushroom In fact, they've become quite the nuisance. Purchase some poison. Ignore them. Fetch your bow. Man, we can't be friends with them. Alright, well, we only have two nutrients left, so... You retrieve your bow and are lucky to leave with not one, but two birds from the flock. They shouldn't show up again for a while. You and your daughter may rest. Nothing more could be done to the birds. The matter was laid to rest. Huh? Something's happening. Your daughter has changed in the night. One day, you awaken to the sound of rustling movement and find your daughter has grown enough to be capable of rudimentary locomotion. The creature slinks around uneasily and a cute little face now greets you on her once featureless body. Her demeanor seems gloomy and shy, preferring to sit in dark corners for long periods of time. Encourage her discretion. Spend time nurturing her environment. Motivate her to do something safer. That's just like building her something, and her environment's fine, so let's motivate her. 
concerned about your daughter's lack of enrichment, you decide to encourage her to do something else. You suspect she might not be getting enough sun, and start taking her out for daily walks in the woods. She begins to look forward to the new routine, becoming healthier and more excitable every day. The decision being made, life continued. That didn't raise her affection. Lowered my stamina, though. All right. One evening, you hear a light knocking at your door. Quite a rare occurrence. Peeking through the window, you witness none other than the witch of the woods standing on the doorstep of your humble hut. Could she be here for a visit or to settle a debt? Introduce her to your daughter. Privately request a stipend. We're doing fine for money. Perhaps it was time for your daughter to meet the witch. She could maybe even learn a thing or two. The two of you answer the door and invite the gloomy woman inside for dry and awkward small talk. Something about the way the two absently stare at each other. You wonder if they've made some sort of connection today. The decision being made, life continued. While sitting at home one day, you hear an unexpected knock at the door. Mm, I don't like that. We already saw the witch. Is this going to be our former business partner that we have to, like, murder in front of our kid? Yup. We gotta kill this guy. We can give him some money. We can kill him. We can beg him to leave us alone. We can go into business with him. We're gonna kill this guy. And your daughter watches. She doesn't react. And then she grows up immediately after you kill him. Your daughter has changed in the night. She's just a blood mushroom. She's not done growing yet. The affection is still only at three hearts. Daughter is well loved. Do you feel it improve? Okay. Oh gosh, it's just the same as last time. So she's turned into a girl, but she's very shy. Wait for her. Buy her a gift to celebrate. Encourage her. I always buy her a gift. But I could just encourage her to come out and be nurturing. I'd like to buy her a gift to celebrate. It's like a birthday almost. So. We got her a present that makes her feel loved. Her, she's extremely developed. Daughter is of good quality, there's no doubting that. Her lack of skills is a hindrance. Your daughter needs food too, and you've just run out. You need to find something to feed her sooner, she'll surely starve. Uh, I have decent stamina. Let's just go collect food. The weather is nice and you're feeling up to doing some foraging today. It may be easier if you focus on something specific before you head out. Take her foraging. Okay, so we're not sending her on her own or leaving her at home. We're going to teach her river plants because taking her out to get mushrooms is... It just feels creepy. The two of you find some watercress and catch some crawfish, then take a break to play in the water. She seems excited to just spend some time floating, a skill she seems to already excel at. You have to force her out of the river just before sunset. You need some time to ring her out before bed, after all. Did we change? But we have a skill. We float. And we gather river plants. 
The decision being made, life continued. An end? Oh my gosh, it's time. For us to be Zanab on our own. One night, you find yourself struggling to sleep. Your mind wanders as you consider your current place in life. You've lived peacefully with your daughter for many moons. Initially, it was strange. Well, it never stopped being strange, but you were always thankful for the company. Besides, the affection you felt for her was like any parent would feel towards their child. That was normal, at least. Your thoughts turned to the concept of time, particularly how you were once alone. Now you are afraid that you will be alone again someday. Your daughter has had more and more curiosities about the outside world. It's only a matter of time before she wants to strike her own path. You hope you will be fulfilled now. You hope you've done enough. Ultimately, you find comfort in what you've done. You may have had many failures in your life, but there's one thing you know you can be die proud of. What do we get? First of all, we got a blood mushroom. Which is not rare, apparently. Where is blood mushroom? And a new beginning. Telling the recluse that you wanted to see more of the world wasn't an easy conversation. As they grew older, you worried about leaving them on their own. Thankfully, your concerns were unwarranted. They were happy that you had grown enough to want to move out. They even offered to help you build your own home, close to theirs. You were wel welcome to visit any time, obviously. Faster than you would have anticipated, the two of you built your home together. They showed you all the tricks they knew and made sure to impart as much knowledge as they possibly could. Finally, the day arrived. You were officially on your own. You were scared a little, but also excited. It felt like a new chapter was just beginning for you. Here we go. Oh, let's get some information. Common blood dead man's fingers. An unsettling mushroom with a corpse-like appearance. Okay, so I'm not super robust or potent, and I don't have a lot of mycelium, but I'm pretty damp, and I've got a lot of humanity for some reason. Let's see, I'm off-putting. Something about you simply does not sit well with humans. Death's repose. You meet death calmly and always prevail over it. Okay. We've got a nope and two wealth tokens. We're obscure young adult. And all we have is the fairy and our parents. We're fully out on our own. <sighs> While sitting outside near your garden and taking in the fresh air, you hear the caw of a crow, then another, and another. You look up to find a rather large group of sleek black birds perched in the trees above you. A few are eyeing your garden, while others are just birding around, as birds are wont to do. Feed the crows and spare some scraps. Scare them off. Just watch them. We're gonna be friends with the crows. Oh my god, that counts as a pass. It was only three. You head to your kitchen, scrounging up some nuts and bits of old bread before returning to the murder outside. Tossing the morsels to the ground, you step back and give the birds some space. A few of the braver ones eventually swoop down and start to peck at the scattered bits of food, others still watching from on high. You sit back down, spending a relaxing afternoon watching them eat. Oh, we, we made friend of bird! I only got this on one other playthrough and I've been so bummed that I haven't gotten it. You've been kind to birds, they always remember that. I don't care if I'm obscure as long as the birds know who I am, okay? As you take an evening stroll through the nearby woods, you happen to overhear something of a loud commotion. When you approach the noise, you're able to see the situation more clearly. Two teenage miscreants seem to be harassing a child. Leave them to their own devices. 
I don't want others in my forest. Get them all out of here. Try to solve the situation diplomatically. Give the teens a scare. We're off-putting, babe. The child needs help, and you're pretty sure you know a good way to do that. I don't know how a three was a pass on that, but rock and roll. You situate yourself carefully, stepping forward and grabbing one of the teens by the shoulder. After taking a quick second to ready yourself, you let out a throaty yell, giving the teen a good shove. They react instantly, scrambling away into the woods. The child, initially paralyzed in fear, visibly untenses when he sees you smiling back at him. He timidly waves at you, which you return before stepping back into the woods without a word. Aww. That was really nice. Let's save, because we had a positive interaction with the child. Did that do anything? We're damper than we were before. And more human, but we're still not any more potent, robust, or mycelious. And it didn't give us any reputation. You are awoken in the middle of the night by a loud crash from your kitchen. You scramble to investigate and finally catch the source of the racket. A man hutched over in pain in the middle of your cooking nook. He spots you and seems to panic, waving his hands around. Wait, wait, it's not what it looks like. Well, it's exactly what it looks like, but I injured myself, so I'm no longer pursuing that plan. Why don't you bless a poor fool and choose to excuse my rudeness? An injured thief is still a thief. Kick him out. Ex we're going to excuse his rudeness. With a sigh, you help the man to a more comfortable seating situation. It appears that he may have injured his leg somehow in a fall. After a short while, he seems more comfortable moving around. Thank you f kindly for the help, ma'am. He seems appreciative and shockingly charismatic. He gives you a sly grin and a wave before leaving you to your own business. You feel a crisp breeze. The heat is relenting and trees are changing color. Something happened, though. Okay, we became more robust and less potent. Why do we lose potency? Oh, I guess because we didn't choose a dangerous thing. Fall has arrived. You are wandering the suburbs of the village one day when you notice an unusual sight. Oh, wow. Asmer, Miu, uh, Mark Zink, Tarsai, thank you for joining us. You missed the grossest thing earlier with the Tooth Fairy. Maybe we'll get it again. Before you is a collection of five or six young humans crowded together in a circle. When you walk closer, you can more clearly hear the words that they seem to be shouting at each other. Damn it, one of them cries out, I should have went scroll. You should always go scroll against you. Scrolls. Oh, this is the rock, paper, scissors thing. We just have to listen to what they say to do, I think. Are these people scholars? When you take a closer look, you can see the group reset. Two new humans go to the center of the circle, holding one fist out each. The rest of the group took an anticipatory position, looking on intense excitement. This is it. If you win this, you win the whole pot. One of the onlookers were speaking closely to one competitor. How intriguing. A pot? A prize pot? You only have a boring old regular pot. A prize pot would be quite the upgrade. In fact, you can see it from here. An ornate box near the edge of the group. You want the pot. How do you try to get it? We're going to join in the competition. We could scare them. We're off-putting. This can't be legal. I don't want or need a new pot. I will never want or need a new pot. Let's join the competition. You're not sure if it's too late to join, but you figure it's getting late. later every passing second. Without another moment of delay, you run forward and implore them to let you join this mysterious ceremony. The human share looks with each other, then words. Do we have to? I just want to win this thing and get it over with. Of course you'd say that, Jeremy. I think a random mushroom lady showing up is a good curveball myself. But what if she wins? The prize? Oh, whatever. She can have it. It's not that good anyways. Finally, they seem to reach her decision. Yeah, you can play. One of them tells you, you know the rules of stone scroll shears, right? Unfortunately, you are forced to tell them that you do not know the rules they speak of. Thankfully, they are quick teachers. 
tell you th that a countdown is performed, and at the end of that countdown, you must perform a hand sign for either stone, scroll, or shears. Stone can defeat shears, scroll can defeat stone, and shears can defeat scroll. This all seems a little strange to you. This is a sort of game that you have not encountered before that requires strange symbolic thinking, but it does seem to be a game of luck at least. With the rules now in your grasp, it's not a game of luck. Jeremy always throws sh stone. He always throws one of them. Two final human competitors ready for their battle. Okay. Last second glance of intensity shared by both competitors. One. The two throw their selection in front of them. One with the symbol you've been told means shears in the other. Stone. The absolute madman went stone. The crowd cheers and whoops excitedly. One of the players, the disgraced loser, mournfully re-enters the crowd. The winner, on the other hand, looks to you. I've tried to do this before. Alright, stranger, let's see what you got. So, always go to scroll versus Jeremy. Kick them, take the chest, and run. Without thought, you look down and see that your hand has selected the outcome for you. The crowd is silent as they gauge the situation, determining the winner. Fuck yes! Finally, after a second of shock, both you and the crowd realize the result. You won. The crowd is whipped into a frenzy. Oh my god, Jeremy, you lost to a mushroom. The audience seems to enjoy this outcome, taunting the winner happily. You are thankful that this appears to be the best ending possible for most participants, and thankful that you now get to receive this incredible pot they were all gathered for. Without being able to wait, you excitedly ask about the prize. Oh right, obviously. One of the youths kneels down near the chest, opening it. Where's the pot? Inside the chest, you find only a collection of human snacks. No pots at all. You question a nearby human, but they can only tell you that this was the prize they were competing for all along. Ugh. Well, it's no amazing pot, but you suppose you'll accept a bounty of treats as well. You begin shoving them into your bag as the teens make small talk with you. Teens are playing rock, paper, scissors in a field for candy. Finally, you've gathered it all. You stand and bid them farewell, thanking them for letting you play their game. No problem. A mysterious last-minute competitor is always a good time, one of them tells you. The group cheers your exit. On your way home, you casually take a cookie from your bag and start eating it. Victory is sweet, after all. My mycelium went up, my robustness has gone up by ten. And my humanity went up by ten. My potency is still dog shit, though. New scenario. The sun is low in the city. Mm huh. The sun is low in the sky, casting a beautiful warm tint across everything that you saw. Do we have anything new? We've gotten some food. Oh, because we won the thing. We're still relatively obscure. Today, it is a particularly beautiful sight, blossoming fruit trees and the wind blowing through grass. Your eyes feel heavy, and suddenly you find yourself falling into a deep sleep. In your dreams, you're sitting on a tree branch. There's a flute playing somewhere. Then suddenly the flute is next to you. Attached to it is the vague shape of a woman. I haven't seen you around here before. Welcome. Whenever you go to look at her, it feels like she shifts. You can't quite describe her. You probably won't remember me when you wake up, but it's nice to meet you. After sitting in silence for a second, she starts playing again. Try to memorize this place, fly, sing along. Where do you go when I'm awake? Flying just wastes the dream. Try to memorize this place. Sing along. Sing along. You close your eyes, absently singing along with the flute. Your voice sounds beautiful. Things could not be more perfect. Eventually, before you know it, your eyes are opening. It's dark out. You should be getting home. 
My humanity went up again. My potency is still for shit. I wonder if she liked that. <laughs> While tending to your home, you begin to feel an otherworldly pull towards the forest. You can't resist, and moments later you find yourself surrounded by trees and standing in front of a mushroom-covered hut. Deep within you, you know the witch that made you resides here. Enter the hut cautiously and treat her as a stranger. Force yourself to turn tail and quickly head home. Enter the hut with the hope of learning magic. Fuck yes! You enter the hut and, howl re and bow respectfully, addressing the witch as you would an apprentice to a master. She accepts your want for knowledge and begins tutoring you. Time moves strangely in these woods, and you are unsure how long you read scrolls and practiced channeling. By the time you leave, though, you're f you find you've gained a slight control over your magical potential. Humanity went up again. Over the past few days, you've developed a growing sense of unease, and one particularly gloomy evening, the feeling intensifies. Because our potency is so low, we're going to die. We're a witchling, and we're gonna die. We've made this beautiful, interesting mushroom. And she's just gonna go out into the woods and melt in a second. <sighs> you are in the dying days of autumn, and a chill in the air bites at your skin. As you look out into the nearby woods, you can feel a strange calling, an invisible force pulling you towards something. It seems you're being summoned. Before you decide if it's a good idea to follow, your body has already made the choice for you. You find yourself uncontrollably walking into the woods. Sometime later, you find yourself in a dark and unfamiliar grove. You're relieved to see your summoner, none other than the Witch of the Woods. However, your relief is short-lived when you see the cold and serious look on her face as you approach. My daughter, the time has come. Though it was not yours, there is still a debt left unsettled, and I will always find a way to collect payment. It seems she really does intend to make you pay for your parents' debt. After such a long time, you can't imagine what she would require of you. It certainly won't be easy. Ask her for a reprieve. It's not your debt. Take care of a dangerous and unsavory matter. We're not going to fight her. We can ask her for more time. We're not going to be good at fighting. We need time to build ourselves up. Come on, please. Oh my god. You give an impassioned plea to the witch to cancel the debt, reasoning that you can't be held responsible for someone else's debt. She considers thoughtfully, clearly surprised by your reasoning. Perhaps the terms could be renegotiated after all, she says, with uncharacteristic consideration. Unexpectedly, you learn the witch worked out a reasonable payment plan with your parent. It honestly makes you wonder why they didn't do this in the first place. My robustness went up again. I'm almost fully human. And I'm not indebted anymore. Is that what that was? Yeah, I'm not indebted anymore. A oh, scroll button doesn't work. We gotta learn some magic. Alright, on one particularly, let's save. Because that was a good shit. Okay, that was a good set of decisions. And rolls. Um, Daughter of Ruin is the name of this chapter. On one particularly desolate evening, you decide to take a walk around the outskirts of town. You find yourself overcome with an unaccountably uneasy feeling as you pass by an abandoned neighborhood, dying amber light casting menacing shadows. We've been here before. As you enter a dilapidated gatehouse, protruding bits of ruin. Oh, this is the fucking robot. Okay. <sighs> Turn tail. Attack. We just saved. Let's go ahead and try a spell and see how it goes. Fuck me sideways. Okay. 
we're going to load and we'll try a spell one more time. And if that doesn't work, then we're going to try a different decision. Come on. Yeah, alright. I'm going to be a mushroom witch, goddammit. As you summon a sudden and fantastically forceful squall, the stone woman falls to her knees under its spore-empowered might. The glowing face projected upon her stone mask flickers briefly before vanishing like an extinguished flame. Her constant whirring ceases, and she lies still, for now. You take a moment to carefully examine the stone statue. The esoteric runes and strange half-approximated anatomy seem to stick in your brain like inky slime. This is not something to be known or even thought about, you decide. We should go tell the witch! You leave that silent monstrosity, as well as your memory of the encounter here in the om ill-omened ruin. Are you kidding me? Go to the witch and tell her about this immediately. It specifically identified you. <sighs> I think my mycelium or robustness went up, but my humanity went down. While on your way to gather firewood. Oh my god, I'm saving. That was... Hmm. You find that your world is suddenly turned upside down, quite literally. Are we in a trap? After a second of disorientation, you suss out that you somehow walked yourself right into a trap. Your foot is above you, caught in a thick rope loop. You call for help, hoping someone is nearby. Thankfully, that seems to be the case. When the figure gets close enough for you to see, you feel a sense of familiarity. It's the thief who attempted to rob you in the night. Well, we were nice to him. Why, hello there, he greets. You seem a little high-strung today. His joke falls flat on you. Nonetheless, he's quick to help cut you down. I'm sorry for the inconvenience. I wasn't trying to catch you. I'll tell you what, to make up for it, plus the attempted robbery the other night, why don't I teach you a thing or two? Of course, my areas of knowledge are rather narrow. We'll take a skill. I do like learning. I have no need of your brand of trickery. I like learning. You consider the rogue's offer and realize that you have no reason to decline. Your chore wasn't time sensitive, so you agree to shadow the man for the rest of your day. The two of you get up to many hijinks, and you discover that though the man does have a penchant for thievery, he seems to try his best to avoid overt cruelty. You also discover many useful tricks along the way, even if most of them are not entirely lawful. You return to your home that night with the promise that you could tag along with him again any time you so desire. Dampness went up. Potency finally went up. Jesus. Okay. So we're at 60, 35, 35, 35, and 75. It could be better. We didn't learn a spell from knocking over that robot lady. Oh, I gotta stop doing that. I do it every time. Wait for the scene to change, and then you will get the thing. There's a man who teaches you how to do unlawful things. You hope he's teaching you well. <laughs> okay. There's a knock at your door. When you go to answer it, you see a woman dressed in a somewhat tacky dress. That's weird. What does that mean? Oh, um, hi. I'm from the nearby town, and I came here on behalf of all the local mothers. Okay. This introduction leaves you feeling a little uneasy. Yeah, me too. As she continues speaking, you sense that she's clearly feeling the emotion of fear. We were hoping that we could convince you to come out and, or, you know, show off a little for the kids, show them, um, the real you. Is that something you'd be interested in? We could provide lunch, obviously. After some- Oh, this is a schoolhouse thing! Well, we want them- we want them to like us, I guess. We got pretty high humanity. After some more nervous chat, the woman writes down a location on a small piece of paper and thrusts it into your hands. Afterwards, she all but runs away. You consider the strange woman and her strange invitation. Yeah, no, we're going to the schoolhouse. Weirdly, some part of you feels compelled to attend. Like, we're definitely going. No turning back. No old saves. Perhaps some small obligation to help children. Or maybe just the thought that if you introduced yourself to a lot of them at once, they wouldn't trouble you if they saw you in the woods later. I mean, true. Yeah, it's the school. 
quickly the day of the event arrives. You gussy yourself up, or at least as much as is possible for a girl like you, and make the calm walk to the village schoolhouse. As you enter, it takes you a second to really take in the scene. There's nearly a dozen children of varying sizes and ages, a few older humans standing around the edges of the room, and a table with some very rudimentary foods on it. You correctly identify this as the provided lunch. As you go to take a piece of bread, one of the adults grabs your shoulder. Oh, thank goodness you showed up. I wasn't sure if you would. Um, why don't you go ahead and stand up front? Does that sound good? While you would have preferred some lunch first, you agree to the plan. You stand in the front of the room in front of the dark board with white scribblings on it. The children turn silent, all staring at you wide-eyed. Okay, so what we're going to do right the hell now is save again because there's a bunch of dice rolls, if I remember well, unless they go badly, and then I think there's only one, <laughs> um, to see if the kids find you interesting or if you're good at presenting. So let's uh, try to get this well. Finally, number hands shoot up. One of the parents interprets. They raise their hand if they have something they'd like to ask you. What a polite system. You look over the crowd, deciding who to pick. You point at a random child, a girl with pigtails. She's quick to ask, how old are you? I was born in spring. Ageless. Let's just answer the question, because I did ageless last time and they did not like that. The child speaking to you gasps. I'm older than you? This realization set the classroom on fire. Metaphorically speaking, of course. How come she doesn't have to go to school and another child cries, clearly angry at the reality that they didn't have to be here? The adults were quick to respond, trying to calm the now angry mob. I don't think you'll be able to get them to quiet back down. Maybe you should just go home now. Besides, you've done enough, one of the adults tells you. You get the impression you've done something wrong, but you don't quite understand what. My potency went up. I'll take it. I'm not reloading. I don't care. Oh well, you did just what was requested of you. You suppose you head home contemplating how strange humans are, but particularly the big ones. As you grow older, you look back over your life. Okay, it's time for some kind of decision. You think back to the witch who created you, can't help but wonder. Yeah. We just grow up? I've been playing for almost two hours. It just didn't keep going. And I don't understand how to... Like, there's... We've had mushroom girls that have lived longer. But I don't know what the difference is. And I can't open my almanac from here. Okay, finally got a three star. None something mushroom. Who was the one who lived the longest? It might have been the tuft, Miss Rin. Nine, is that how many, oops. Is that how many decisions you get to make? I don't know necessarily what those th things are. It's just the number they are in the Wikipedia. That's not. This is frustrating. The ink cap was one of my favorites. All right. Okay, here we go. This is something specific to us. Because uh, I did Bissan twice by accident. Alright. Well, we went through two, basically. We've got multiple colors available.
Wow. Blood is a flower color, but it's weird that that's a flower color. Because we got it from a stone. We've got all the sheet music. We've only found one music box and two wax cylinders. Okay, only one daughter has died. Four daughters are alive. We've only gotten after all this time and then the death ending. Can't keep it together. Wish your daughter is dusty. Wish your daughter has nothing to look forward to. Wish your daughter finds comfort. Divorce is humanity. I had a big night out. Wish your daughter stays. Slays a survivor to the great fan theater. Wish your daughter takes a surprisingly productive nap. Wish your daughter embarks on a terribly doomed day. Wish your daughter is slain by a survivor. Oh, like I turn into a monster? Helps the puppy. Or the violet coral girl. Victim to a certain magic. Meets a knight. Sees the boundary between two worlds. Becomes well acquainted with a hog. No choice but to be patient. Well acquainted with a hog is letting the pig kill you. Okay. We gotta stop trying to do so well. Alright. That's definitely something to, um, let me. That's definitely a way to approach next week. Um, that hadn't really occurred to me. Um, because, you know, I want to do good. I want my mushy girls to have good lives. Um, well, cats and kittens, it's been just shy of two hours, and we raised two mushroom girls to adulthood. Um, I'm really enjoying just coming back to Mushroom Sume. Maybe we'll do that again next week. Uh, I know the VODs are behind. I have them. I'm sorry. I did have that migraine last week or the week before. Um, and I actually had another one yesterday. So I'm really glad that I felt good again today to be able to stream. Because I really don't like skipping weeks. Um, yeah, thanks for joining me. Uh, feel free to follow me here on Twitch or on Twitter or YouTube at Commie And I do accept tips. ko-fi.com slash Spriggan, S-P-R-I-G-G-A-N. No commie, just my name. Um, I am currently trying to raise money to catch up on my electric bill because the winter has been brutal. So um, it's currently the middle of March because uh, I, I don't know how far in the future the VOD will be up. I don't want people to send me money for an electric bill that's from 2024 in like five years from now. But uh, yeah. Uh, feel free to go to my Kofi if you want to help me pay the electric bill because I need help. It's like $360 because we only have like a wall unit and a space heater at opposite ends of our house. <laughs> it's not well insulated. Ah, uh, living in America. Anyway, don't feel obligated. Just if you can. Uh, I hope that you have your favorite stuffed animal to curl up with this evening and that you drink plenty of water, and that you do something for someone else without expecting anything in return, as always. This is your weekly homework. But also, I'd like to add that I really hope someone does something for you without expecting anything in return. That would also be nice. Um, Alright. Have a great week, cats and kittens. I adore you dearly. Be good to each other. Nighty-night. Goodbye.